एम एस वन यूनिट ट्वेल्व ऑर्गेनाइजेशन स्ट्रक्चर एंड डिजाइन इंट्रोडक्शन ऑर्गेनाइजिंग इज अ फॉर्मल ग्रुपिंग ऑफ एक्टिविटीज एंड रिसोर्स ऑफ फैसिलिटेटिंग अटेनमेंट ऑफ स्पेसिफिक ऑर्गेनाइजेशनल ऑब्जेक्टिव इट इज पॉसिबल टू अचीव ऑब्जेक्टिव विदाउट फॉर्मली ऑर्गेनाइजिंग बट देर इज लाइकली टू बी ग्रेट वेस्टेज ऑफ रिसोर्स एंड टाइम ऑर्गेनाइजिंग इंश्योर दैट ऑब्जेक्टिव आर अचीव्ड इन द शॉर्टेस्ट टाइम शॉर्टेस्ट पॉसिबल टाइम इन एन ऑर्डरली मैनर विद मैक्सिमम यूटिलाइजेशन ऑफ द गिवन रिसोर्स इन द कॉन्टेक्सट ऑफ अ फॉर्म इट्स पॉसिबल इट्स पीपल मशीन बिल्डिंग फैक्ट्रीज मनी एंड क्रेडिट अवेलेबल फॉर यूज आर द रिसोर्स एट इट्स डिस्पोजल ऑल दिज रिसोर्स आर लिमिटेड Your role as a manager is to organize all these resources so that there is no confusion, conflict, duplication or wastes in achieving your organization's objective. You will be required to allocate to each person his role, designation and position in the organization, his responsibility for achieving specific objectives and authority for utilizing the resources assigning to him and the higher authority to whom he has to periodically report his progress in this unit we will take up all these issues for discussion dwelling at some length on the various types of organization structure that you can choose from to suit your company's specific objectives organization structure and chart it's 12.2 organization structure refers to the formal established pattern of relationships amongst the various part of a firm or any organization the fact that these relationships are formal implies that they are deliberately specified and adopted and do not involve on their own of course it may sometimes happen that given an unusual situations new working relationships may evolve and which may later be adopted as representing the formal structure the second key word in our definition of structure is established only when relationships are clearly spelled out and accepted by anyone everyone can they be considered as constituting a uh, structure however this does not mean that once established there can be no change in these relationships changes may be necessary with passes of passes of time and change change of circumstances but frequent and erratic change are to be avoided a structure can be based on relationships only if they exhibit a certain degree of durability and stability the formal relationships in an organization are those as described in an organization chart figure 1 is present a typical chart for the company engaged in manufacturing the boxes in the chart represents the various important positions in the organization the title of the position in the box viz manager purchase or manager marketing indicates the activities of that position the distance of the box from the top indicates its position in the hierarchy the closer the position to the top the higher its status and vice versa the lines joining the various positions represent the formal reporting relationships usually between a supervisor and a subordinate the organization chart is a rather abstract illustration of the structure to get a more complete picture of chart may be supplemented by job descriptions of each position the job description gives in details the activities and responsibilities expected of the person occupying the position both the organization chart and job description are simplified abstractions 
of the actual situations in reality there are many more positions and relationships than indicates indicated in a in the organization chart the degree of authority a superior has over his subordinate is also not indicated in the chart nor is the relationship between two managers at an equal level reflected in the organization chart despite all these limitations the organization chart is an extremely useful tool in understanding and designing the structure the structure of an organization unlike that of a physical mechanical or biological system is not visible therefore it can only be understood by a representative model and by observing its behavior 12.3 formal and informal organization if you and your colleagues decide to meet every saturday evening for 1 hour and from form a recreation club to play chess and carrom you are meeting in an informal organization however when the same group of your colleague meets to preview tilt last quarter's performance and plan for the next 3 months it is the context of a formal organization thus while the information organize informal organization is spontaneous the formal organization is the result of the deliberate and planned effort to pattern activities and relationships in a specific manner to facilitate achieving the specified objective a formal organization is the result of explicit decision making deciding how people and activities should be related to one another however there is no such decision making involved in an informal organization which may simply evolve over time in the context of a business organization both the formal and the informal organizations operate together to form the total organization the formal structure delineates specific departments activities people and their reporting relationships the the informal structure refers to the social group or friendship which people working together may form a most important aspects of the informal organization is the informal communication network or grapevine as it is more commonly known if you analyze the communication network in your organization you would realize the amount of information you gather from official circular memos and speech speeches is rather insignificant compared to what you un unofficially learn from your colleagues your subordinates and even your peers the grapevine constitutes an extremely important component of the organizational informal system how often you have been able to avoid a crisis before it actually ir- erupted because the information about the impending crisis was conveyed to you by the grapevine besides the grapevine the other manifestation of the informal organization is the formation of groups which may spontaneously evolve when the formal organization is slow to respond to changing external and internal forces but sometimes these informal groups may also work against the formal organization this may happen when an informal groups of workers may force other workers to lay down tools or work to rule or generally pose impediments in the path of progress sometimes the norms and work ethics involved by the informal organization take 
precedence over the official norms the head of the market research division of a large multinational company evolved in manufacturing and marketing a wide range of consumer products would always spend their three always spend 3 to 4 hours every saturday morning in office even through saturday was officially a holiday observing that the departmental head worked on a holiday his immediate subordinates also felt obliged to be in office every saturday the manager did not expect it from his subordinates but the latter felt that by doing so they would be creative a uh, favorable image for themselves in the eyes of their boss which would help them in their promotion within the formal organization similarly you would find informally involved values operating within the perman parameters of the formal organization these values may relate to dress, employment of women, employment of members of a minority community, etc. In understanding the structure of an organization, you must understand the important role played by the informal organization within the formal organization. Topic 4, it means 12.4. Factors influencing the choice of structure. As a manager, it is your job to design a structure that will best suit the specific requirements of your organization. Designing an organization structure is a continuous process that seems to be ideal design today, may tomorrow prove to be totally in ineffective. It is your task as a manager to be continually improving the structure of your organization. Any change in the factor which impinges upon the design of an organization will necessitate a change in the structure to suit the new conditions. Impact of Environment The first factor affecting the design of your organization structure is the environment an organization is continuously interacting with its environment in terms of drawing inputs from it and providing it is output providing it its output all organizations operate within an environment which comprises economics social culture political and legal subsystem a change in any of these subsystems may force you change the design of your structure. Change in government regulations regarding foreign equity participations in India made it imperative for the most foreign-owned companies to dilute their holdings and become more national in character, increasing awareness about personal rights and social pressure on maintaining the natural state of environment have forced many companies to set up personal welfare departments and install expensive equipment to neutralize the toxic influence generated in their manufacturing processes. You might have noticed that banks have instituted a process by which public complaints can be tackled at the highest level. Some of the bank managers and chairmen even set aside specific timing, then they give a personal hearing to individual grievances. Business organizations are very much in the public I today, generally speaking, the more if responsive your organization is to the change in the environment, the more favorable will be its public image and greater the chances of its survival and success. You have not only to ensure that appropriate changes are made, but equally important, these changes must be 
perceived by both the public and the government. Impact of technology The second factor affecting the structure of your organization is the technology that you have adopted. To begin with, each pair of shoes was made by a single cobbler who probably spent four to five days on the entire process. With the concept of specialization and division of work, organization instead of being designed around individual craftsmen were structured on the basis of different people doing only a specialized part of the entire process of shoe making. This concept was further refined with the introduction of automation and assembly lines. Now with the introduction of computerization and robots, new structural designs are once again emerging. Entire plants are manned by a single operator who controls the operations through computers. Major humans' inputs are needed in designing computer controls and software rather than in performing repetitive jobs. These technology changes affect not only the large firms but also the smaller ones in India. In a large number of medium and small scale companies, simple routine functions such as preparing payroll, invoicing and laser maintenance have been computerized. Such small changes also necessitate redefining jobs and redesigning existing departments to suit the new technological process. Today, the greatest impact of technology is on the manner in which people collect, receive and use information. In many companies, full-fledged management information system departments have been set up in response to the explosion in information technology. Impact of Psychological Characteristics the changing psychological characteristics of the workers is the third factor impinging upon the design of the organization structure. Greater demand for laser time led to the introduction of the five and in some places even the four days week our country has also recently adopted the five days week. Greater awareness about worker rights and use of more militants means to earn those rights have led to the widespread, info widespread formation of trade unions in always every organization. Some companies have had to redesign their structure in order to give a formal recognition to the unions. The three factors that we have discussed so far are external to the organization and its management. However, there are some attitudes and values of the management which have a critical bearing on the structure of an organization. Most important of these are the management's attitude towards the issues of decentralization and delegation of authority and the role of function of line and staff personnel. Also affecting the organization structure are the scalar principle and span of control. 12.5 Degree of Decentralization Centralizations refer to the concentration of authority and decision making in one single position in the organization. In a one man enterprise, the entrepreneur makes all the decisions and all the authority and decision making power is vested in him. With the expansion of business, if may no longer the possible for one man to control all the operations and may become necessary for him to delegate some responsibility and authority to other person. Delegation implies that you are acting on behalf of your boss by virtue of the power 
which he has given to you. The greater the delegation of power is greater is the extent of decentralization in the organization. You will find that some or companies even through physically very large have highly centralized structure. All decisions are taken by the top management which the middle and operating level managers having little or no say in running the show. On the other hand, you may find that even in a relatively small organization, there is greater delegation of power and the structure is very decentralized. The structure of decentralization is an organization is partly a manifestation of the top management's attitude. Some managers do not like to delegate even the smallest task to their subordinates. There may be a variety of reasons for this. Doing all the tasks himself may give the manager a great sense of power or he may feel that the subordinate is in incompetent and may commit mistake. Total centralization, however, is never desirable at it may bog down the manager in routine, trivial tasks and leave him no time for planning the company's future. An effective manager would decide the issue of centralization versus decentralization on the basis of the requirement of the situation rather than his own personal bias. So let's see when decentralization is effective. Decentralization is effective when conditions in each market are so different that only a high degree of adaptation of local conditions will lead to success. Multinational companies with the subsidiary in many different countries are a typical example. Second is Decentralization will be effective when success depends on the quick response to the information and conditions generated at the local level. Companies dealing in stock and shares or international currencies require speedy response to the fluctuating prices for getting the best returns. And third is decentralization will be effective when active participation of people in the planning and implementing of objective is conductive to good performance an engineering company manufacturing electrical switching equipment sales mainly to the state electricity board seb through the tender system each tender system requires close monitoring and personal follow up at each stage till the final award is made realizing that personal report with the individual seb is important the company has fully decentralized local offices in each city where the seb is located the introduction of computers and real time information has influenced the concept of centralization is an organization. Information may be generated at the factory, but it is instantially, instantaneously transmitted to the decision maker even if he is located 10,000 kilometers away for suitable action. Information may be proceed and in Information may be processed and used at the place where it is generated or it may simply be passed on to another location for use in decision making. Real-time information can lead to greater centralization or decentralization. The degree to which a term decentralizes is structure depends on the requirements of its unique situations. Also, a firm 
may not decentralize all its operations but go in for only partial decentralization. Functions which facilitate local adaptation, quick decision making in response to local changes and strengthen worker participation should certainly be decentralized. On the other hand, function involving economics of scale, utilization of specialized knowledge and involving huges sums of money may remain centralized. Finally, the degree of the degree of decentralization also depends on the availability of competent and reliable people to head the independent operations. 12.6 So what is line and staff relationships in the context of organization structure and design? The role answer is the role of line and staff personnel is the other issue to the decided in the context of designing your organization structure. Traditionally, any function which directly contributed to the organization's objectives was viewed as a line function. Staff function were those which helped line functions to perform more effectively. However, an important point to note about line and staff is that in the former there is a direct relationship of command from superior to a subordinate while in the latter the relationship is more advisory in nature. There are some traditional principles which have greatly influenced the concept of organization structures the most important of these are specialization of work scalar principle and span of control specialization of work in the context of organization structure and design a very basic and traditional principle of organizing is to break down a task or process into smaller more manageable tasks which call a utilization of special skills. This concept of work, specialization and division of labor was the for, for union of assembly lines. This is indeed a use, useful principle in so far as it allow a worker to concentrate on that activity at which he is most proficient. But in many situations, this concept has been carried too far and jobs of workers have become so fragmented and trivial that a worker's job may be reduced to putting a screw on a bolt and simply tightening it. Scalar Principle Scalar principle and unity of command are two closely related principles. The scalar principle stated that authority should flow in a straight line from the superior to the subordinates in a hierarchical manner. The principle of unity of command states that ideally each subordinate should have only one superior. These two principles establish a basic hierarchical nature of an organization. Span of control and level of management in the context of organization structure and design. Closely related to a concept of hierarchical structure are the concept of span of control and level of management. Let us understand this with the help of an example. In 1975, Mrs. Das, a housewife living in Bombay, started making garlic chili sauce at home and selling it to her close friends, relatives and neighbors. The sauce becomes quite popular and Mrs. Das began receiving many orders, including two from the nearby Chinese restaurant, unable to cope with so much work, she hired Indrani as 
an assistant this was the first step in delegating authority and creating another level of management existing customer now had to deal with indrani as mrs tas herself concentrated on preparing the sauce and tapping potential new customers a years later mrs tas hired one girl to help in the kitchen two girls to assist her in the making sales calls and one office assistant for indrani now authority had to be delegated in the kitchen as well as in making sales calls and hence two level of management were created in the kitchen and sales the new office assistant reported only to indrani who in turn reported to mrs tas and thus there were three level of management in administration span of control refers to the number of people a manager has to control now mrs das span of control expanded to four people indrani one kitchen assistant two sales assistants and indrani's span of control was restricted to only one by 1980 the small sauce making enterprise had shifted to the shed in the nearby industrial estate with a full fledged production facility consisting of 10 people and a sales team of 16 girls divided into four territorial teams supervised by a sales manager and an office administration setup of 25 people Mrs Das organization as it's evolved in shown in figure 2 3 4 and 5 starting out with the relatively flat organization where Mrs Das was in direct contact with all her customers and suppliers her organization had acquired many level of management and a vertical structure by 1980 as a organization add on level of management it becomes vertical and the span of control at each level becomes narrow in a flat organization the span of control is relatively wider and level of management are few the flow of information in a flat organization is fast and there is a greater individual satisfaction and it is the ideal structure for conducting research and development and new product development groups there is a great deal of controversy regarding the optimum number of people a manager can effective manner or the ideal span of control the important factor is not the number of people who work for a manager has to control but the number of people he actually has to work with on paper the marketing presidents may have 30 area sales manager under his span of control but since he does not have to interact with them individually more than once in 6 months and all other interactions including the regular reports are through the vice president sales the system work well in practice there is no ideal span it will vary from individual to individual and from one organization to another similarly there is no hard and fast rule governing the level of management too many sales only add unnecessary complexity because decisions informations and instructions must go through too many channels each organization has to find its own ideal balance differentiation of tasks and activities within an organization the various multifaceted multifaceted task and activities of an organization have to be divided into smaller manageable component to facilitate efficient achievement of objectives the most common basis of differentiation and division are function 
product location and customer in recent times the two types of organization structures which have involved are the matrix organization and the network organization differentiation by function the grouping of activities according to the type of function performed in the most commonly used structure you would find this only you, you would find this not only being widely used in business organization but also in non commercial organizations such as hospital universities etc the functional structure is most suited when an organization is dealing with a single product or service the activities can easily be segmented into similar complementary activities such as production marketing finance purchasing etc depending on the nature of the organization and its scope of activities the functions it has to perform may differ vastly from those of another organization for instance one company which undertakes both manufacturing and marketing may have departments engaged in purchase production marketing and finance if it is selling a product such as tv or refrigerator it may be also have an after sale service department on the other hand a company which is an ancillary to a parent company may have only departments of purchase manufacturing and finance since it is selling its entire production to the mother companies where there is no need of for a marketing department the most important advantage of functional structure is that it allows for specialization of work thus ensuring the most efficient utilization of human resources the other benefits of this form of de- departmentalization that there is concentration of authority and responsibility in the top man thus ensuring the there are no conflict arising from different authorities the hierarchical line of responsibility is very clearly de- dis- delineated the major disadvantage of the functional structure is that functional specialists often lose sight of the overall organizational objectives and work for narrow functional objectives rather than organizational objectives the major, the other major problem associated with this type of structure is that of coordination amongst so many functional departments each with its unique set of constraints and problems differentiation by product as a company moves from a single product or service to manufacturing a wide range of products it may find that the functional structure is so longer effective this is especially true if the products are very different from each other in terms of the technology raw material and manufacturing process used and the final product in such a situation the company may then have to adopt a structure which revolves around individual products or product lines companies such as hindustan lever manufacturing and marketing utter utter toiletries chemicals and agro based products richardson hindustan with its range of vix products clear seal cream and soap have structure resol- revolving around different products the extent of differentiation would vary from one company to another one company may club all its toilet soaps detergents and washing powder in one product line while another may differentiate between toilet soaps and detergents or even 
between individual toilet soaps if they cater to distinct market segment or have a very different raw material base. The main advantages of using a product based organization structure are that it facilitates optional utilization of specialized machinery and technological processes, permits greater coordination where specialized customer service is required and enables product managers to be responsible for the profit generation of their department. Johnson and Johnson manufactures and markets a wide range of specialized surgical structured and accessories as well as a range of products of children. Products based de departmentalization ensures that the two major product lines operate as independent profit divisions since there is almost almost no con commonality in terms of manufacturing process, marketing skills and market segment served. The biggest disadvantage of this type of structure is that it leads to duplication of managerial manpower thus leading to highest costs. It also requires a strong leader to control the various product groups so that they do not become alienated from the overall organizational objectives. Differentiation by Location When an organization is departmentalized on the basis of location of different tasks and activities, then the organization is geographically organized. Food Corporation of India in which functions and activities are difference, differentiated on the basis of four different zones. The biggest advantage of differentiating the functions geographically is that it allows the maximum utilization of local resources and talents as well as speedy decisions making in response to changes in local condition. In fact, where the participation of local people is essential to the success of the organization as in voluntary and social organizations, a geographic differentiation is ideal. The problems associated with this type of structure related to problems of top management control and require a large number of executives with general management skill to head the various area operations. Differentiation by type of customers Another kind of possible grouping is by the type of customer served. A daily based company manufacturing electronic typewriters and desktop photocopiers had organized its sales force on the bias basis of its two product lines. The major customers segments were government or organizations, public sector companies, ministries, departmental undertakings, public libraries, etc., and private sector companies. The companies was not very successful in its marketing efforts. Investigation revealed that the same customer organization was being visited by two different salesmen, one each for typewriter and copier, resulting in unnecessary duplication of effort and time. Moreover, the government and private sectors organizations each had a very different set of criteria govern governing their decisions to purchase. The sales approach which succeeded in a difficult sector companies could not be similarly applied to a government setup. The company then reorganized its sales force into two teams, one catering to the government sectors and the others to the private sectors. With each 
team having responsibility for both the product lines which with the recognized reorganized structure the company was able to make a dent in the highly competitive market matrix structure in the context of organization structure and design the matrix structure is a combination of the product and functional organization and is usually created for executing a project which requires a the skilled service of a functional man as well as the specialized knowledge of a product man large turn key projects in specialized field requires a matrix structure the distinguishing characteristics of a matrix structure is that it operates under a dual authority the person is accountable to two bosses at the same time one is usually boss at the other is boss for the duration of the project obviously the pros problems emanating from this type of structure relate to conflicting roles and authority arising out of the ambiguous domination of authority and responsibility network structure in the context of organization structure and design when an organization needs to control other organizations or agencies whose participation is essential to the success a network structure is organized in this the main organization creates a network of relevant agencies and its influences in different ways network structure is mostly used in non business organizations which have socio political objectives for instance the structure De industrial development corporation sidc may resort to a network structure in their objective to establish an industrial state in this the sidc may act as the lead agency and involve the state electricity board local municipal authorities land development authorities authorities for water and sewage control p and t department for communication facilities appropriate authorities for pub building roads etc the sidc would also need to establish the network with people who would ultimately be using the industrial estate to know their requirements in terms of specification and special needs it would also use the service of an advertising agency to promote the industrial estate and attract maximum number of entrepreneurs for the <coughs> for the construction of shed and factories the sidc may have to utilize the services of private construction agencies thus a network structure invites the utilization of a number of different services offered by different agencies there is need to coordinate the different inputs and synchronize them towards the ultimate objectives integration of organizational tasks and activities having designed your organization's structure to suit the specific need of your company and its environment on the basis of most efficient grouping you now have to ensure that these differentiated groups are integrated towards the common organizational objectives generally speaking the more differentiated and specialized are the activities the greater the need of, for coordination and integration this is because there is danger danger and these specialized group getting isolated and start viewing each other as rival uh, rather than companies companions 
in pursuit of the same goal have you ever witnessed a situation where departments belonging to the same organization vigorously fight each other over the allocation of annual funds think of our company as one big organization as the state of union territories as its differentiated groups do you think they are well integrated towards the common goal of national economic development the basis of integration is proved by the three element of organizational structure namely authority administration and communication network integration through authority the hierarchical relationship in an organization define the status of each position in relation to the others and the powers that goes with that position the basis of the hierarchical relationship is that the superior has authority over the subordinates in terms of assigning him work and the latter in turn his obligate to obey the superior hierarchical relationship facilitate integration because they ensure that all activities are ultimately placed under one authority and thus are linked together the top position becomes the center for all coordination in a small organization with a single product lines integration and coordination from one central position is certainly feasible but if you consider large organizations which operations spread over many geographical area product lines running into hundreds and employing thousands of people it is no longer physically possible for one people to coordinate all the tasks and activities in such situations the hierarchical structure has to be supported by the administrative structure and communication network integration through administration a great deal of coordinative effort in organization is concerned with a horizontal flow of work of a routine nature administrative system are formal procedures designed to carry out much of this routine joseph a uh, hetterer the analysis of organizations 1973 every organization has its own administrative procedure and system this relate to ev- almost every aspect of organizational life the procedure for selecting new recruits calculations uh, and mode of overtime travel medical and other allowance the system of memos and movement of a file from one department to another for decision making are all illustrations of administrative procedures the larger the organization generally the more formally prescribed and numerous are its administrative procedures how how administrative procedures help in integrating different departments and different levels within an organization can easily be understood by an illustration in a typical organization at the end of the corporate year each individual say a salesman would fill his own assessment of his performance the salesman immediate boss would fill in a confidential report cr on his performance the salesman's own assessment and the cr would both the given over the personal department which may add information from its record on the number of years the salesman has both has been with the company his starting salary and designation number of promotions and increment and bonus received any loans outstanding against the his name etc this complete file would then go to the manager marketing who would in 
consultation with the general manager decide on the salesman's next promotion and increment in accordance with the established salary structure thus the administrative procedure for deciding promotions involved sharing of information between different levels in the same department marketing and between different departments marketing personnel and general administration integration through communication in the previous illustration the basis of for taking a decision about the salesman's promotion where his on assessment report and his boss confidential report cr both these are representatives of the means of communication used in an organization minutes of meeting circulars notice progress reports monthly in house newsletters are all specific tools of the communication network of an organization just as manpower raw material and machines are the resources of an organization so is in information information regarding the development of new technology by a rival company or the introduction of a new model of refrigerator are vital piece of information which are drastically affect the future course of action for a company but information is highly perishable if not communicated to the right person at the right time it has little value information may be received at one level in the organization but utilized at another salesmen and other field staff are usually the eyes and ears of many organization they gather bits and pieces of vital information but to be useful this disjointed information piece must be immediately communicated to the brain of the organization that is the manager who will analyze and act upon the information just as market information moves upwards with uh, the organization decision have to be communicated downwards a uh, decision regarding change in the distribution network made at the top but implemented by people in the field therefore there is need for communication networks which provide the transmission of information both up and down the hierarchical structure similarly networks should be available for exchange of information at the horizontal level computers and many other technical improvements have resulted in organizations increased ability to collect process analyze and transmit vast amount of information organization today have gather today have greater access to an almost unbelievable array of information in the final analysis however it is not so much the access of sophisticated technology with an organization has that determines the efficiency or efficiency efficacy of its communication network but rather the stance and attitude of the top management in encouraging its people to talk with each other and share more information designing structure for a service organization the distinguishing characteristics of a service organization is that it does not produce any physical or tangible product but instead it provides a service which may in some cases be almost totally intangible dry cleaning after sales maintenance for your tv and air conditioners health clubs men municipal corporations banks utility universities etc are all organization which provide service 
uh, health clubs service can be described in terms of tangible and specific gadgets and equipments which it has however the behavior of the staff towards its clients also forms an extremely important part of health clubs service but is intangible in many cases it is the intangible part which is more important in attracting and retaining customers in dealing with service organizations therefore you should lay emphasis on efficient service as well as friendly and courteous behavior in highly undifferentiated organizations such as nationalized banks personalized and friendly service can be become a basis of distinguishing the organization the other important variable in organizing service institution is to correctly identify the service which the organization is providing to the customer and the activities needed to be taken to maintain and prove the service the telephone department provides a communication service to its customer to maintain and improve its service it has to ensure smooth operations of existing telephones provide the for new equipments pro government and installation 12.14 summary of the organization structure and design in this unit we have discussed various issues involved in structuring your organization you have the variety of designs to choose from but no one design as its is can prove to be perfect fit for an organization you would always need to modify and adopt a st structural design according to the specific objectives of your organization the environmental factors such as political legal cultural and social conditions and your own attitude as a manager towards the issues of centralization of power and delegation of responsibility whatever be the structure you decide upon decide upon for your organization you must always keep in mind the basic principle of defining and describing jobs differentiating them to form manageable parts and then integrating them to achieve the common goals